Welcome back everybody to Tying Tuesdays. Appreciate you joining in and hope you're ready to tie along. Today we're gonna tie the Graveyard BWO. You saw us do the Graveyard Midge a while back um, and recently featured in Fly Tire Magazine is the Graveyard BWO. So it can be a um, Blooming Olive um, uh, Betis version or you can tie this in a PMD variation as well or some other Mayfly variation color combinations whatever might work for you. But today we're gonna do the beta style. So here's the Graveyard BWO. And we're gonna tie this on a fully mill hook. This is a great grub hook. It's just a curve shanked, standard down eye, lightweight version of this hook. It comes barbed. I'm gonna go ahead and just debarb it there real fast using my vise. And then we'll lock it on in place. Doing a size 18 today, but you can vary this uh, in a wide range of sizes, you know, from your smaller 22s and 24s on up, uh, you know, 16, 18, that kind of thing as well. To start it out, we're gonna use some Vivas thread. This is just 70 denier in olive, and that'll be our primary uh, underbody material for the graveyard betas. So we'll start just a quick base and then work on back to where we're gonna tie our tail in. So walk on down, a little ways past where that barb is hanging out, going down, just using a little bit of the curvature on this fly. And then I'm gonna utilize our good old whiting cape in Dunn, just a beautiful cape for the tailing material. Obviously a great product for dry flies, but can be versatile and used for tailing material as well. So I'm gonna find a larger gauged feather, something that I might not use on a dry fly. If I was tying a dry PWO, you're gonna find a really small gauge section. But for this, I'm gonna grab one of the more bugger sized hackle feathers, and that'll give us a good bit of material to work with to tie in as tails. And then we'll just peel a little bit off there, doing our best to keep those tips Nicely aligned, funnel them up real nice, and then tie them in and we'll measure that hook shank. Don't want to go too long on the tail, so we'll keep it right about like that. And then we can secure it on the back end here. And a couple of wraps down and then you can always adjust your positioning slightly if you need to. and shorten it up and then we'll work on forward and that'll help to taper the body a little bit also want to keep it fairly small but a little bit of taper is always a good thing when we're talking about mayflies mayfly nymphs emergers that kind of stuff and then we're going to add in our ribbing so the ribbing today is a little bit of a semperfly um, one millimeter point one millimeter in brown Good contrasting dark color to the olive. It's not gonna pop off of there, but it'll add a little bit of segmentation to the pattern overall. I really like this Semperfly wire because you've got a lot of different color options and they're very rich and crisp colors. Uh, I think three or four different sizes that you can get from them. The 0.1 millimeter, 0.2 and 0.3. So we'll secure that in right on the side. Wander back, nice even thread base, and then convert onto the front. And we're just gonna leave ourselves some room to build up a bit of a thorax. We got a few materials we're gonna tie in up a front. So we're gonna leave ourselves plenty of room to do that. Good old half hitch. And then we can rib our wire here. I'm use my rotary, you can do it by hand as well. We'll go on up five or six times to where that thread's hanging out for us. It's a great springtime bug to have in your box. Um, and also throughout the year, you know, with blue wings, you got a good range of season. Starting in the early spring and then going throughout into the fall. 
with some prominent hatches on either end of the season. So a good bug to have imitations ready for when you see that activity, whether it be on top or subsurface if they're moving around. From there, we're gonna tie in our wing bud and that is gonna be a little bit of this razor foam. Razor foam comes in two sizes. If you watched the graveyard midge, you know that we have our 0.1 mil thickness foam and then our 0.05. So we're gonna use the real thin stuff here for this pattern. If you have some packing material at home, sometimes you can get away with that and utilize some of those materials that you got laying around the house. If it's a nice thin foam, almost translucent. And all I do is cut a little strip that's a little bit skinnier than the gape of the hook. You can play around with how much you want on here. This adds a little bit of a nice action to the fly. So it's a super lightweight bug that if you fish towards the back of your indicator rig, you might get it to rise up and have some realistic presentations with it coming upward in the, in the water column. And that can encourage a lot of strikes. So really a good way to fish subsurface is to have a nice lightweight emerger that's gonna sort of rise up and uh, trigger those fish. Next material we're gonna add is our dubbing. So our thorax dubbing on this is gonna be some of the olive brown. Uh, UV ice dub, olive brown. And one trick I have, because I've loaded this box with various different ice dubs, so to remember what they are on the opposite side, I just took a label, ma label maker and called them all out there so I can remember what I'm using. Over time, a lot of times I'll sit down and I'll tie six of one variation of a fly and it does really well, and then I go back to sit down and I'm trying to think to myself, well, what, what material was that again? Which color was I using there? So labeling and, and kind of keeping track of that stuff can be really helpful over time. And this is a pretty sparse noodle overall for this thorax. We're gonna add in just a little bit. I need to leave myself plenty of room to tie in what is gonna be the gills on this fly. And it can be very easy with that kind of extreme down eye to crowd it underneath. So I'm gonna leave myself plenty of room and I'm actually gonna reposition this to make that a little bit easier as well and we'll get our eye to sit upwards a little more. For the gills, we're gonna use some Antron, some polypropylene. This is actually Smarkle Emerger yarn from Hairline, which is a great option when you're considering that type of material. A good substitute for anything that calls for Antron yarn. And a fairly sparse amount. I'm only gonna tie in five or six of these uh, underneath there. So I'll clip off just a few, cut it in half and double it up to kind of maximize that material. And then we'll clip the ends to make it a little bit easier to tie in, just square it off. And then we'll come back and trim it again once we have it tied in to make it look a little more realistic. So I like to flip the vise Grab that on either side here, and I tie it in long just because it's easier to handle that way. We'll do a couple of wraps, sort of get it to be right underneath there, and then we can pull it through and get it to the length that we need it to be. And a little bit of maneuvering. Get it into the right place there. There we are. And then you can kind of get it to be fixed right on the bottom by adding a couple extra wraps to get it to turn over towards the bottom because I kind of tied it in on the side and then used my thread to grab it and pull it around a little bit. That way we can clip off our excess towards the side here Hopefully you can see that okay. Instead of it being right underneath, it's gonna block your eye. If you tie it in on the side and curve it over, at least that bump is sticking off to the side and won't impede you when you go to uh, thread this onto your tippet. Then I like to add just a tiny bit more of this UV brown dubbing to sort of 
give it a clean finish. And that's too much, so let me back a little off here. Just a very light amount, a couple of turns before we come back through and we're gonna tie in, tie down our foam. So we're gonna pull that over the top to start and secure it with a couple of light wraps. Gotta be careful with the razor foam because if you cut into it, it can break through. Uh, UTC is nice for this because it's a flatter thread overall, so it's gonna be less likely to happen. But if you were tying with a Vivis in a small gauge, Danville, some of those more classic wax threads, that tendency can be there for it to rip into it. So once we're facing out of the front, we're gonna pull it rearward one more time and hop on top of it with our thread a couple of times to secure it rearward and sort of up, flaring up in the air. Pull it back and clip it to the same length of the thorax. And then all we gotta do is whip finish and we got a nice graveyard betis. So a cool little bug, a great little emerger to have handy. If you got an active hatch and you need something subsurface, it's an awesome dropper fly. You can hang this bug under a variety of dry flies, even your smaller atoms. If you're fishing a traditional BWO, whether it be a parachute um, or a palmered hackle, this is a nice little fly to have hanging down off of that. It's a very lightweight one, so you can get away with a small dry and still maximize your chances underneath the water there. So graveyard BWO, graveyard betis, whatever you want to call it, a great little bug to have in your fly box, in your arsenal. Uh, to tackle those fish that are keying in on your on your blue wings. Thanks for watching. Uh, give this one a try.